Welcome to another Figma tutorial. In this video, we'll be covering effects. You can apply effects to layers and objects to change or adjust their appearance. These can be especially helpful when you're working to improve the appearance or aesthetic of a design. Let's start with shadows. There are two types of shadows which can be used within Figma. The first one is called a drop shadow, and the second one is called an inner shadow. A drop shadow is an effect which casts a shadow below the layer or object which it is applied on. Drop shadows are used to give the impression that the element is raised or floating above the background behind it, and are often used on buttons, windows, menus within a design. The shadow can be customized to your exact liking through specifying its offset, blur size, softness, color, and blend mode. In this first example, I have a button, which by itself looks decent, but we might be able to call a bit more attention to it through the use of a drop shadow. We'll start by clicking on the shape layer itself. Glancing over at the Properties panel on the right, we see a section called Effects. Clicking on the plus, Figma, by default, applies a drop shadow to our selected layer. We can then click on the Style icon on the left to customize our shadow, or click on the Visibility icon on the right to hide or show our shadow. To have the shadow better match the style of our button, we'll click on the Style icon to customize our shadow a bit more. Here we see a total of five controls which we can use to modify our shadow. Editing a shadow's blur will increase or decrease the size of the shadow. Let's go ahead and set this to 10. Adjusting the value of our X position allows us to move the shadow on the X or horizontal axis. Likewise, adjusting the Y position allows us to move the shadow on the Y or vertical axis. Let's keep the X value at 0, but increase the Y value to 6. Instead of using the default shadow color, which is black, we can use the eyedropper tool within the color selector to sample the color to be used for our button. Finally, the last field enables us to edit the opacity of our shadow. I'm going to bump it to 40%. Here's what that looks like. Adding a drop shadow to our button really helped it stand out a bit more, as we can see by toggling the shadow's visibility off and on again. Inner shadows can be used to apply inner depth to a layer or object. Using our same button, let's take a look at how it might look to have a depressed state. We'll start by once again clicking on our shape layer, and then clicking on the plus to create our shadow. And finally, we will select our inner shadow from the list. Inner shadows share all of the same controls that drop shadows have, and can be changed in the same way. I'll set the blur to 10, and the Y value to 6, to bring the shadow into the button a bit more. Next on the list of effects is the layer blur. The layer blur effect blurs any object or layer on which it is applied. In this example, let's say we want to blur the entire image here. I'll start by clicking on the image itself and we'll select effects from the properties panel on the right side. Choosing layer blur, we can immediately notice the effect taking place. Our entire image has become a bit blurry, which we wanted. We can adjust the blur value to adjust the intensity of the blur. Let's set it to 10. The last effect is called a background blur. This will blur any layer or object that is underneath the layer. We can see how this works in our example here. In this example, let's suppose we want to blur the background behind our image box to make the text more legible. We will start by clicking on the background layer, and then we will again select effects. Selecting background blur, as we can immediately notice, blurs any parts of the image which lie directly behind the shape. We can adjust the blur value here again to determine the intensity of the blur. Two common effects that are not in this list are inner glow and outer glow. However, we can easily create these effects by using an inner shadow or a drop shadow and adjusting our blend mode to screen. Using a light color for the effect color will give us the effect that we're looking for. Let's review what we've learned today. Use drop shadows and inner shadows to show depth and add dimension. Layer blur blurs the layer to which it is applied, while background blur blurs all layers below it. Create inner glow and outer glow effects by using shadows with the blend mode set to screen.